Um, what do you say? Uh, middle. We want. The horizon line. Yeah, 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 horizon line. Okay. So, I recommend today that you get a board that's just a little bit bigger than the paper. Because if you put your vanishing points on the paper, you're going to have a rough time with things. So what I recommend is that you come out and that you put your vanishing points just slightly off the page. The problem is that, uh, you know, if you're looking at a vanishing point, you're in one point perspective. And if you're looking between two, you're in two point perspective. But if you include those vanishing points, you're in two situations of one point perspective and a situation of two point perspective, and it gets really complex. Not that it can't be done, but that it's just a lot to um, handle at the moment, right? Like you could theoretically, you could spin 360 degrees and include everything that you see on a piece of paper, but it'd have these weird distortions that you have to do to correct for everything. Um, so. The first thing you do here is find a vertical. And I know that I'm about six feet tall. And so I'm going to cut this wall off here. Because I know that the wall is about like 10 feet, probably. Maybe not. So I want this to be bigger than this, right? Because this is my eye level. So there's that box thing back in that corner. I'm gonna ignore that for now. So what I do is I just go from the vanishing point out. On both sides. And I've created an inside corner, right? Outside corner goes the opposite. If I want this to be an outside corner, I do like this, right? Pretty easy. So you're either inside the box or outside the box. Uh, popular drawings are like corners like this. And then like outside, we have all those like diamond things and bricks and, uh, and bridges and stuff that you can draw. Okay. So if I want that, if I want to include that, that box, I know that the vertical of it is somewhere out here, just to the right of this. And I know that it comes out a little bit here. So then I just go to the vanishing point, build it out. Now I found this point, and I can connect it here. Then I can bring it up on both sides. I just kind of estimated where this front corner is, and then estimated how wide it is in this wall relative to that. You can measure if you want, do the size of the measuring kind of All right, idea. can I, can you back up for a second? Mm -hmm. I lost you when the vanished, the vanishing points are off the page. Right here, and right here. So you drew the corner, mm -hmm. and then you connected the bottom to the vanishing point off the page. Yeah. But how did you do the other, the floor line going down? This one? No, the... This one? Well, yeah, but all of, all of the ones... How did you... This corner was already there, right? So the corners, did you connect those to the vanishing points? Yeah, so this goes to... These two go to the vanishing point here. 
is you go to the vanishing point here. Okay. So I built that inside corner, which is inside the box, right? The visible part. So. But how did you go down? Down from here? From the vanishing point. She's talking about. She's talking about these two lines. Oh, yeah. yeah, from the vanishing point. <laughs> yeah, from the. I, I got lost with that step. So they just, they come from the vanishing point. See? But how did you, okay. How did I so find So the this vanishing light? point is here. You went like that. But how did you make it, like, how do you just go down there? I just drew from, from here. this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you can pull in, you can go, I guess what it is, you can go in either direction to or from the vanishing point. Okay. And the way you get the vertical, you can measure it out, right? Like you can say, well, I know where my eye level is, right? It's about, um, about a foot above the computer, right? So I can measure out that, and I know that it approximately has this sort of relationship. So getting that first vertical is really important too. So once you go upward, then you have the intersections and you can go from the vanishing point up here, right? And from here. And if you did it right, it should meet up, you know, somewhere around this vertical, right? So I know that I need to adjust this vertical here. I did the back first. Because it's easier to build the back corner than it is to build that box and then First, I'm about to use the back is the front and the back line. No, 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 no. Because they're offset. Like, I can kind of Im imagine where that back line is right here. And I know That's that this is kind of to the. Yeah. And then what I can do is I can increase the line weight of the front to bring it, to kind of bring it forward. So then you can build in the, the window pretty, pretty easily. You can go over just a little bit. Bring that down to about there, right? So I don't, what, I'm, what I'm dealing with is I have like a front of a window, most of which is gone from the wall, and then the actual window glass itself, and then the frame in between those two. So that can get kind of complex. So the way that I knock out the frame is by going to the vanishing point there. So we're going into the wall now. Okay. Then for the back of the window frame, I need to go back to this vanishing point, or from this vanishing point. And then go up. And then back to here, right? And then you have the window frame itself, the green junk. Yeah. So that you can treat as just parallel as like part of this line right here. And then it's going to get built up here. Hit there, come down again. Then it's got, you know, various divisions there. Okay. 
Right now it's looking really flat. So I know, and the blinds are in the way, but I know that it, that it still goes back in space, right? Like this goes back in space just a little bit here. And this goes back in space a little bit there. And there, right? And I know that to make this feel cut out, I just keep going to the vanishing point. And I've kind of like built back, built my way back to the actual window glass, right? Make sense? Okay. One of the things you can do uh, if you need all the construction lines, which they kind of help, is you can use like a blue or a red colored pencil to establish things like the horizon line and like this line that goes all the way back to the vanishing point. And then for the lines that you want to keep, you can come back in with like a regular pencil. So you have like the construction in one color and the finished stuff in, in another. From there, basically I just have to, the, remember how we had the questions like, is it horizontal, vertical, uh, parallel to the line of sight right. yesterday? And then you just have to decide which of the three. So now I have a more complicated set of decisions. Verticals, are still gonna be just vertical on the page, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. Sure. But now, because I have two, I'm dealing with two vanishing points, I have to say, well, my line of sight is that way. Right. So nothing's paralleling my line of sight. I have to, I have to make a decision. Uh, do lines go to that vanishing point or that vanishing point? So I have two sets of receding lines now. You know, If it's gonna be, if, and if something is parallel to this wall, it has to go to this point. If it's parallel to this wall, it has to go to this point. So when you do something crazy like the ceiling grid, you can go over and make yourself little tick marks where you see ceiling grid divisions. Sneak one more in there. Right. And then you can go from the vanishing point out to those. And here it gets crazy, right? Because you're going almost vertical. Now, the reason I tell you to keep the vanishing points off the page is because this is starting to get really distorted. If you go to a point where you're going straight up and down and it's still on the page, and then you start to cross it, then things get really, really weird. And you want to avoid that situation. So then I come over here and I do the same thing, right? Put little tick marks. And I just go to from to and from the vanishing point. This is how I get my ceiling grid. So that establishes the basic ceiling grid. And if you want to get more advanced with it, all you have to do is make sure that you're working within kind of this space. So right here is where this uh, air vent is. So I can put the air vent in. You notice that if you look at it, the sets that are, go here and here are kind of, they have a shadow. So I can do that without even like trying to use value 
I can use the heaviness and lightness of line to get there. And then you have the, the light right here, right? So that's divided in half. And then thirds. And then it goes up. So the light just got pushed into the, into the ceiling. And then it's got heavier line weight here and here. And so on. Questions? How did you uh, advantage your points? Mm -hmm. So you have to. Yeah, and I put them off the page. If they're on the page, weird things happen. What if there was like a box against the sidewalk? Like, how would you handle that? You mean that the wood box that's there now? I, I just, yeah, how would you handle that? Same thing, right? I know that it's a little bit off the floor, so I'm just going to put it on the floor. It'll be about here, right? I know that, it, actually, about here, overlaps a little bit. For the sake of completion, you probably want to draw the whole thing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it goes about here. You just do it just like you do anything else in perspective, really. Both, yeah. I can draw through it as if it were invisible too. Just like we did structure. Yeah, it's got its little wheels and stuff under here. So, I drew it through, you know, the other wheel would be down here, and the shadow would be here. So if I don't draw it through, and I don't find that back edge, there's a danger of actually putting this inside and through the wall, you know, like overlapping forms. So that's why you draw the, the back corner of the stuff. Make sense? So for two point perspective, do you always have to start with a corner? Yeah. Start with, it's, okay, I just call it the first vertical, right? And it's the one that establishes the two largest planes, or two largest walls. And you can do it the opposite direction, right? Like if you have, um, like if this is your paper, and this is your horizon, you can put your points out here. And if you're outside, right? and you're drawing a tall building, and this is, and your eye level is like three, four feet up because you're sitting down, you just do this, right? And then you mark all your divisions of where things fall, and then you just carry those out, and so on. 